everything I put out was just, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Harry, thank you so much for your time today. It's exciting times. It's been six years. I guess it feels good that we are finally here. Um, I, I, you are an excitable person to begin with. So does that mean that you're kind of just you know that there that there's just a, a burst of energy every five seconds with you right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been chomping at the bit, waiting for uh, the twenty third to come around. You know, it's just like, ugh, it's been <laughs> four months of promotion on this album, and sure, we've been keeping the fans busy with you know something every month, but you know, just dragging it on, and and it's been a year since we've actually started the demo work. Oh, yeah. on it. So, uh, well, we had the whole thing completely recorded and ready for mix. Then we had to wait six weeks for the mix date. And then after it was mixed, we had to wait another like eight days for it to be mastered. And then after it was mastered, we had to wait another full week to hear the masters. So. <laughs> <laughs> they were testing yeah. your patience with this one. Let's just yeah. uh, say it that way. Um, now, obviously, you guys have seen it all. You've like this is uh, yet another rodeo, if you will. But this is a this is an interesting album for a lot of different reasons, uh, different approaches. Uh, there's some different sounds as well that we hear on the album. Um, so, it, does this feel a little bit as a? I don't want to call it a reset for the band, but is this? Not just another one, but this is very much the start of a new era for Jack Panzer. Uh, no, it's a kind of a combination of both. We we approach every album as its own thing, like it's the only thing we've ever put out, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to. We're fans of our own genre and our own music, so if we're not pleased, we'll keep pressing at it and pressing at it until we are pleased, and then we know if we're pleased then everybody else will be pleased too. And we've never been wrong on that. Yeah. Um, all the songs that we've liked, sure, there's been other songs that we've liked. Why did they pick that? You know, but uh, but yeah, and, and we were just thrilled with this album. It yeah. didn't take long. Everything just snapped into place. Uh, creativity. I think it might have been because uh, the starvation of the pandemic, you know, our creative juices didn't have a, a chance to get out and and get flowing and so we were just really hungry again like we were in our youth with ample destruction and and the early days we were just starving to produce something and and uh now we're at the the peak of our, our you know abilities and so it's just really quickly it's it's easy to get into the groove and just start spitting out good stuff You mentioned ample destruction, and I don't want to spend too much time looking back and, you know, look mostly ahead. But you mentioned that album; it's coming up on its 40th anniversary. Um, I don't want to make you feel old, but are you a nostalgic person? Like, do you generally like? Do you like to take a step back and 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 celebrate milestones like that, or, you know, a 40th anniversary or a, or a fifth or a sixth doesn't really make too much difference? Uh, what 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 what's it like for you? We've been playing Apple so much for so long, you know, <laughs> doing a 40th anniversary and playing Apple again with, you know, we even did a whole tour with Joey Tafoy on Drop the Needle. So it was like song one all the way to Crucifix. And then when we got done with Crucifix, we added like another five songs, you know, the yeah. from fourth judgment on. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a celebration of the fans, basically. The fans sticking with us for this long. Sure, the musicians are going to stick with it because that's our heart and soul. Right. You know, we always, as long as we're alive, we're going to want our creative juices to flow. But, uh, but to have the fans stick with us and, and then have the fans' kids you know, get into us and stick with us and then go into going with their dads and their moms to see in this thing that their moms and dads are like, Whoa, this is this is amazing. You just wait. You just wait. And then the kid gets there and he's like, 
wow and he meets you know I, I'm, so many times i've met the kid and then the dad who i've seen five or six times or 10 or 15 times and then you know then again i see the kid again and the kid's growing and you know or or you know this person's got a band of their own now and they're doing their thing and now they can experience what you know i'm going through the adoration of their fans coming to them and just juicing them up so yeah but uh 40 years it's like a drop in the bucket you know uh it's crazy how just five years can go by in the blink of an eye and uh you really have to stay on top of that and uh make every day you know the most it can be because uh it doesn't take long for days to start piling up on each other you know (laughs) yeah yeah for sure for sure now as you mentioned that whole family feeling around the band um you know for most bands that have your legacy um you see people come and go um and jack Banzer has had people come and go and and some people stayed only short about period of time but compared to many other bands that have your your history the core group of people in the band has been ridiculously stable over the years and and, and comes across as a pretty tight-knit group and you already mentioned a couple of things along those lines what is it that has made um the band such a such 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 a group of you know, such a family really um over the well, years mark, where mark so many Bright- have struggled yeah mark mark brighty sorry i didn't mean to cut no, you no, off no, go ahead. Yeah, mark brighty started this whole thing he uh he he's the one that got us together in our first band roller with uh with john tatley's brother pete <laughs> playing bass and uh D- mark lived on the same street as me when we grew up as kids so we've we've been through all elementary school, junior high, high school. We formed our first band together. He didn't. There was a point he didn't even know that I sang because I was in church so much singing, you know. And then when he found out I could sing, and then how many choir classes I was taking, and and uh, he went and played, uh, learned guitar from Johnny Smith. So I mean, Mark and I have just been like a, a strong bond. And Mark, cre- I let Mark create the music because that's kind of how I write best. Um, there's got to be a music and emotion that draws my lyrics, that dr- draws my melody into something. And if I don't have that and I conjure it, well, it's it's not the sound, it's my sound. Right. And my sound is completely different from Jack Panzer. So I allow Mark and maybe the other guitarists to create that sound. And then I just take the emotion from that sound and, and do lyrics from it. But yeah, it's the brotherhood of Mark Brady and John Tetley that we were buds since elementary school. and We just kept it going. And yeah. that's a thrill too, you know, to know that after all these years, you know, John Tetley and Mark Brady and, and, and Harry Conklin have been together, you know, unlike other people, you know, they can have lifelong friendships, but the band has been the one thing that keeps us together. And if we didn't have this band, who knows? Right. Uh, how tight our friendship might be so it's kind of like a blessing in disguise you know yeah, to yeah, have this yeah. thing that keeps binding us together and you know after all these years you have a, a an electric chemistry about you so mark knows kind of what the parts i'm going to put on it and i kind of know what john is going to put to it and i can kind of foresee what mark is going to write when it comes time to writing you know same thing yeah. on stage it's like that chemistry, that electricity on stage that, that is bonding like brothers that you don't get from just, you know, uh, players that are paid to be there, you know? There's a, there's a lot of variety on, on, on the album. There's a lot of energy and um, the, you know, some of the songs that have been released already, I'm thinking Stronger Than You Know, obviously also Edge of a Knife. Those are songs that there's an anthemic feel about. Some is a little, they're different songs, but you know, and one's a little faster than the other. But you know, there's an anthemic feel that, for me, is like they're gonna they're gonna be really cool to see live, and I really want to see them live. I also know that whenever you guys play, because of that history, you know, there's always everybody comes with a long wish list of stuff that they want to hear. Uh, you guys obviously have a lot to cover as well. So all these shows that are coming up with this 
cool new album coming out. What should we expect? Like, how much of, of the new record is gonna is gonna make its way into the set? Well, we got another song coming out, Dark Descent, and that's gonna be advertised in the next few days. So that's why I'm putting it out. Uh, most likely, the song's gonna be out before this gets aired. Yeah, yeah, for you know? sure. Because uh, next next week is is when it's starting. But uh, we're gonna have four or five songs out there, and we haven't even uh, landed on the one song that we thought was gonna be our main, our first song out. Uh, we're saving that for the last. So there's already four, maybe five songs that might make it uh, in this set. Um, and obviously, we're gonna have to play those uh, before we play on anything else. But it, it basically depends on on what charts. You know, if this song charts well, then we're gonna have to play that. Um, if if this song out of the three or four, or maybe another song off the album, <laughs> might you know, once the album comes out, who knows how it's gonna chart? So it's we're basically just gonna read off the charts, read off the fans. We always put feelers out, um, even even though we have tours started. We still put feelers out, like okay, well, which one of these, or what would you like to see? And like you said, our, our, our set and our time, it, you know, unless we want to be like Guns N' Roses and play a three-hour set, <laughs> there's still going to be one or two songs that we didn't play that we have played that people say, why didn't you do that? Right. You know, when we wanted to start playing Scarlet Letter, we had to bump something out, um, you know, but there's, there's the standards. So, yeah, we'll play the standards, maybe like the 13 standards, and then we'll play the four or possibly five songs uh that are actually aired and on youtube and then uh then we'll just take it from there depending on yeah. how much time we have on some of these stages i know on Vakken we only have like you know maybe an hour time slot right. so that really right. crunches it down to a lot so we may have to only play two songs off of the new album in order to get the standards in you know That you mentioned walking uh, you know it, it sparks a question that i've always wanted to ask you because um you know like jack pants has always been one of the the go-to band when people thought oh u.s power metal or u.s heavy metal like that was one of the bands that was always one of given as one of the prime examples and and one thing that i've i mean i was i was born when you guys brought out ample destruction so i'm turning 40 soon um i was around in most of the 80s but i definitely wasn't at your shows yet right um but like looking back now um you guys are always like this this stereotypical example of u.s power metal but then at the same time if you look at not just all the shows that have been announced all these european festivals that have embraced you like crazy you're on one of the most euro metal labels that exists today um, and there's a lot of European metal in your sound. And you guys were always open that, you know, what, your big inspiration when you guys were getting started was, you know, English heavy metal. For me, you've always been like, sure, yeah, they're labeled US power metal, but you were so much more Euro than US. And this is just for me, a European living in North America. Um, what's your take on that? Because I always felt that you were a little different than all the bands they grouped you with. Yeah, we loved Budgie. Tigers of Pantang, you know, Girl School, all those bands. Um, you know, uh, John Sykes, we loved his guitar playing. Um, Thin Lizzy, you know, grew up with all those bands. So, yeah, that, that was a major influence on us. Manila Road, you know, a lot of those bands. So, and, and since Mark's the writer, he was, that was his thing, was New Age of British Heavy Metal, you know. And so uh, he's, he's just always kept that. Uh, we always try to put like a little bit of American edge on it. I don't know what that really means, but it kind of differs us a little bit, you know. You can hear it in other American metal bands like Metallica, maybe not Megadeth so much because they're thrash oriented, but bands, you know, like Iced Earth and, uh, you know, uh, underground bands, you know. So, yeah, the, the, uh, the British wave had a, a huge influence on us, Deep Purple, all that stuff. So, yeah, we, we want to keep, we can't help that, you know. That's what we grew up in. That's the first thing he recognized. That's the first thing he loved. So that's always going to be pulling on his heartstrings. And whenever he comes to write, that's that's kind of the first genre that Mark is probably going to pull from. Uh, you know, I hate to speak for Mark, but 
knowing him through these years, that's usually what happens is, uh, you know, he, he pulls from that knowledge of those previous uh, heavy metal bands from Britain. This new album, obviously, is a little bit more unique, aligned with the, the comic book as well. There's a, there's a story, there's a concept. You mentioned um, you have to feel the music and then that draws out the lyrics from you. Um, when you're working on a story, you know, um, I've interviewed many bands and bands that have done concept albums. Some people will say, oh, you know, it gives me direction and it helps me be more creative. Other people say, It can be limiting at times because it still has to fit within the puzzle, if you will, whatever I'm working on. Uh, what was that for you, channeling channeling those lyrics? Well, yeah, in order to stay on text, you need to have some kind of story planned out. So usually uh, the person that's doing that will map out this whole story or, you know, maybe have a, a, like a little Bible to go go by. So what we had was Mark had three songs, and he didn't really present those songs to the band per se, but we went off the cover art because Mark really liked that, and he thought, okay, let's do that. And so Mark and Rickert brainstormed and went a little bit further and said, okay, well, let's make it a post-utopian world here, post-apocalyptic, and uh, let's let's add the animal aspect in it, but let's well, let's write something from the perspective of the animals mm -hmm. to just kind of give people a mystery. So I got so excited on that, I wrote a big story. Now, my my big story was five chapters long, and I've, I've been posting it, you know. But I thought, you know, this is just the first draft. Yeah. And I told them, this is just the first draft, guys. If there's If you read through this and there's anything you don't like or anything, you know, let's... Let's work on this until it's great. But my first draft was just, yeah, let's go. And Mark said, this gives me everything I need and, and, and all the energy to write these songs. So in the next two or three weeks, Mark had all the songs written oh, wow. for the album. And then it was my job to basically take that song and see where it fits in the story. And that happened very quickly. I started coming up with titles. Usually I'll put a tentative title out and I'll show what I have so far. Usually it's a chorus and a bridge, maybe even a verse. And then I'll say, okay, is that cool? Can I go from there? Everything I put out was just, yeah, 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 yeah. So I was so excited and everybody else was so excited. It just fell into place. But yeah, um, there is one person that has to, is tasked mm -hmm. with the story. And, and that was me. And I expected someone else to have their own ideas. But no, um, uh, my, my idea came by so fast. And according to them, was just properly fit that uh, they didn't want to do anything else. You know, they were like, this is all we need. This is enough to get us going. And then when it came time for the comic book, Mark just wanted to come up with something different for the fans. So he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm really in love with the comic books. And, and let's be ahead of the edge because I can see people are going to comics these days. So he looked into it and he said, if we, if we do anything from Jag Panzer, it's got to be high quality. So he looked into high quality comics and we had to fill like 18 pages, 12, 18 pages. So he got with a couple of artists. I think he did like five or six artists. Finally, there was one artist that had his point of view and he said, okay, well now since we're doing a comic book, uh, Rickard came up and Mark again brainstormed and said, let's do it from the, the, uh, the human's perspective and have the animals be the bad guys in this, you know? And so that's where they created you know, prey, the, the, the bats, and then the beasts that we have. So, um, and, the, and now that's kind of like the mascot for the band so far. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not on the album, but he, he's all over the comic book and we're making t-shirts out of it. So, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah we, now we have two different perspectives of the same story and, uh, you know, who knows where it's going to go. If, if right. this album does well and the tours are successful, we'd love to see a short series about it, you know, or maybe a short movie or something because it is, it is a great idea and the symbiotic um, brotherhood of man and beast. But, you know, man, tired of being subject to uh, the beast being subject to the man, wants their own thing. And they're like, okay, if you have your world, why can't we have our space too? 
So, you know, that's kind of like fits in with real life. You know, you struggle on your job and the boss is always on top of you. You're like, okay, well, when am I going to be the boss? You know? Right. <laughs> I really like that because when I listen to Bon Jovi songs and stuff when I was earlier and I was like, oh man, I'm going through this experience and Bon Jovi related to me or the Scorpions or Dawkins yeah, yeah. or something, that really just sank into my whole core and I'm just like, ah, oh, every time I felt that song, I got energized because I'm like, yeah, I'm going through that. That speaks to my world, you know? And I think that there's a lot of songs on The Hallowed that does just that. It's going to sink in and it's going to directly... Um, affect with, you know, relate to the life that we're all living. Uh, Harry, thank you so much for all your energy and excitement. Um, uh, super, super stoked about the new album. I wish you guys all the best, and um, I hope to see you guys on the stage real soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers. There you go. I hope all that was okay. Oh, yeah. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.